Good morning, little nuggets. Welcome to part two of your mini lesson on making nouns plural. So in the previous lesson, you learned six very handy rules that will ensure that you form your plurals correctly and spell them correctly so that you look smart and brilliant in public and on your standardized test. Today deals with the rebels. Um, the rebel plurals that you will encounter and that trip most people up, especially when spell check is not available to you. So by the end of today, you should be able to deal with nouns that are irregular. Uh, you should be able to know which nouns in general will be the same, whether they're singular or plural, how to make your compound nouns plural, uh, what to do with loan words that come to us from other languages, in particular Latin and Greek. And last but not least, when you can use an apostrophe to make a plural, and that is when you are making numbers, individual letters, symbols, or words that are used as words, plural. And then as always, you'll be able to proofread for them and catch yourself before I do. All right, let's begin. Rule number seven, so you can pick back up in your notes where you left off. Irregular plurals. We call them irregular, ir meaning not, because they're not normal. They don't follow any set rules. Uh, they're sort of like the character on South Park, whatever, I do what I want. Um, these nouns, unfortunately, you just have to have sight recognition or have enough exposure to them that you recognize when you look at them uh, whether they're correct or not. So some classic examples, the word child becomes children. There's no real rule governing that. It just does what it does. Uh, the same applies for foot, becomes feet. Goose becomes geese, man becomes men, and tooth becomes teeth. Most of you, uh, by virtue of being alive and reading things over the course of your lifetime, you've learned to instantly recognize when something doesn't look right. For example, if you saw the word gooses on a paper, most of you uh, would recognize that that doesn't quite look right and you might question yourself or double, or, or, or double check it uh, before sending your communication. Other irregular plurals are ones that are the same no matter whether they're singular or plural. So there could be one, there could be 20, but the word's going to stay the same. Uh, a lot of these are related to animals. So for example, you see in the bright teal at the bottom of the slide here, deer stays deer, sheep becomes sheep. It doesn't change, okay? Another one that people frequently have issues with are proper nouns which refer to certain nationalities or ethnicities or sometimes even religion. The general rule of thumb is that if your proper noun for a group of people uh, or a culture does not end with an end, it usually stays the same. Whereas if it has an end, you just add your S as you normally would. So on this slide, I gave you the example of Vietnamese. There's no N at the end. You wouldn't say the Vietnamese fled to refugee camps. You wouldn't say that. It stays the same. You said the Vietnamese fled to refugee camps. Uh, it, the same would apply for other examples such as Chinese. We don't say Chinese, it's just Chinese. Uh, another example might be Portuguese. Uh, notice all these ones that I've given you have ended in E-S-E. -E. Um, many of them do end that way. Um, don't forget, though, if it ends in an N. For example, American, you're just going to add an S. Americans. Mexican, Mexicans. Okay, Can Canadians, it ends in an N, you just add an S. It's only for the ones that don't add an N that you want to take a second look at. All right, let's move on. Now let's look at how to form plurals for your compound nouns. Number eight is the common sense rule for this. You just add an S to the end like you would for anything else or ES uh, depending on of course what consonants and vowels are at the end. So you see the example spoonbill, that's a bird. There's more than one spoonbills because we're not talking about 
multiple spoons, we're talking about multiple birds, and spoon plus bill together refers to the bird. So the S is just going to go at the end. The same type, type of reasoning applies for the other examples here. Smash up or mash up becomes smash ups. Ice box becomes ice boxes. Notice the X. So we do use our ES rule that we learned last time. You remember that? Mm hmm. I bet you do. I hope you do. If you don't know it, go back and review. And then last but not least, six year old becomes six years old because you're not talking about multiple sixes, you're talking about the kid. So the S goes at the end. Now, this is very closely related to the common sense rationale behind number nine. So let's read the rule and then we'll look at the examples, which will elucidate or make it much more clear to you exactly how this rule works. It's really just common sense. Number nine states, if you have one of the words is being described or modified by the other word or words, you want to form the plural of the word that is being described. Uh, modify is a word that you'll hear very frequently in English class. Uh, so think about jacking up a car. If you modify a car, maybe you lower it, add a spoiler, add an amazing sound system, you're making modifications or changes. Um, so when you look at compound nouns, often one noun, even though it's a noun, it is modifying or changing the other by making it more specific. So let's look at the examples. It makes it much more clear. Sister-in-law. You want to ask yourself, all right, do any of these words give information about the other words? So we have sister and we have law. Those are our nouns, correct? So are we talking about multiple laws or are we talking about multiple people? Of course, we're talking about people. The second noun in law is describing or modifying the word sister. So sister is the word that we're going to make plural here. The same applies to the profession notary public. A notary public is somebody who can stamp and verify and witness documents. Uh, something cool to look into if you want to make some extra money when you're an adult. Same concept applies. We're not talking about multiple publics. We're talking about multiple notaries. So we're going to make the word notary plural. Notice again, because there's a consonant before the Y, we are changing it to IES. Again, public is letting you know which type of notary it is. So because public describes notary, we know we make notary plural. And last but not least, this is one that you see all the time on television advertisements or on television shows and dramas, maybe CSI, SVU, those types of shows, Bones. Attorney at law, again, we're not talking about multiple laws, we're talking about multiple people or multiple attorneys. So this is what we're going to make plural. Take a minute and see if you can explain to yourself why attorneys did not change to IES, whereas notaries did. Do you know the answer? What you should have said to yourself or thought to yourself, attorneys doesn't change because there is a vowel before the Y. Remember when there's a vowel before the Y, all you do is add S. Whereas with notaries, we had a consonant before the Y, so we changed it to I-E-S. Let's move on to your next to last rule. 10. This is the challenging one. As you know, English is a very rich language because we borrow from so many different cultures and other languages. It's a very, very diverse language. For you, that makes spelling very interesting or challenging, depending on which adjective you want to use. At one point in time, in order to be a well-educated person, going to school, even grade school, you would have been required to learn Latin and or Greek in order to be considered educated. Latin, as you know, is a dead language, and Greek is generally the province of scholars, anthropologists, archaeologists, etc. These are languages that most English speakers have limited experience with. So that's why these irregular plurals can be difficult. But if you follow this chart and you memorize the series of patterns, it becomes very easy to fix them, even without spell check. 
So when a word comes to us from Latin or Greek, always look at the endings. There are certain endings that will telltale, let you know that this is not coming to you from um, English. It's coming to you from one of these classical languages. So notice alumnus, you have the U-S at the end. The U-S will change to an I. So alumnus, cactus is another example, becomes cacti. Alumna. Okay, female form of alumnus, by the way. It's going to sound the same, but it is, it's spelled differently. It turns into alumni, spelled with an A-E. Okay, so A becomes A-E. Another example that's not here, but the word larva. Okay, larva would become larvae with an A-E at the end. Analysis and crisis both follow the, the same general rule. I put two of these on here because they frequently pop up on both your SOL and your SAT. So SIS in analysis, crisis, basis, thesis, these turn into SES at the end. So analysis becomes analyses, crisis becomes crises, thesis becomes theses, basis becomes bases, you get the idea, and so on and so forth. Datum. I bet you didn't know there was a singular form of data, but there is. The UM is another dead giveaway that you're dealing with Latin or Greek, and that's going to turn into just an A for the plural. And by the same token, the NON phenomenon, we're going to add an A at the end. So unfortunately for this rule, the only way to really be able to check yourself without an outside source like a dictionary or spell check is just to memorize these patterns, what the typical endings are and what they tend to change to. Now, do be careful with this. Just because a word ends with U-M doesn't necessarily mean that it's Latin or Greek. Um, but over time, and really the more that you read and the more English classes you have, these have become easier to recognize. Are you ready for the last rule, Nuggets? Yay! I'm sure you're excited. Last one. This is the moment you've all been waiting for. I have been harping on you nonstop about your apostrophes. Many of you are forming plurals incorrectly by adding an apostrophe every single time you add an S. As we've learned, apostrophes are generally used to show possession, except in these instances. And Rule 11 covers the only time when you may use an apostrophe to actually make a noun plural. You can use an apostrophe S for numbers. So let's say I have multiple uh, numbers in a pile of stickers and I want to say that I need two more fours to put the stickers on my mailbox. I would say fours for apostrophe S. Okay. Same with letters. T, uh, you didn't capitalize your T's in the sentence. T apostrophe S. Uh, a really classic example of this is when we're talking about grades in a classroom. If I said uh, there were a great deal of, or that we had many A's on this assessment, I'm talking about more than one letter A, which represents the grade, so I would put A apostrophe S, just like you see here for T. Uh, symbols. For example, uh, your hashtags, your ampersands, which is what this example is, your exclamation points, um, you use apostrophe S. It's permissible. Um, so for example, if I wanted to say, you have too many exclamation points, all right, and I were using the symbol instead of writing out the word, I would use apostrophe S. In history class or government, when you're talking about all the years in an era, we add an apostrophe S to that. I will tell you that there is some controversy over this rule. Um, it is starting to change where some teachers are accepting it without the apostrophe. But if I were you, when in doubt, I would err on the side of caution. And definitely on your standardized tests, you want to make sure that there is an apostrophe S there when you're talking about a period or, a, or an era. Make sure you use the apostrophe S. 
All right, the last two can be the hardest for people to wrap their heads around at first, but it, it's not as hard as, as it means. What do I mean when I say a word used as a word? Well, normally when you say a sentence, you're putting words together to create and communicate meaning. But occasionally, you will be saying a sentence where you are referring to a, a actual, an actual word. So, for example, uh, the teehees from the back of the room were annoying me. Okay? Teehee, I'm referring to it as the word. I'm not saying teehee, Joanna giggled. I'm referring to the word as the word, and I'm making it plural. A word is a thing. So if a word is being used as a thing in your sentence, then you will use an apostrophe S. Another good example, goodbye. Uh, Romeo and Juliet took forever to say their goodbyes. Okay? We're, we're referring to multiple words. It is a word is a thing. So we do use apostrophe S. Also notice, anytime you're referring to a word as a word, notice that these examples are both in italics. That's because you must italicize them in order to uh, underscore the fact that it is a word as a word. Uh, one last example, if you're still having trouble, let's say you wrote a really long stringy sentence with uh, four or five ands in it. I might write a comment on your paper that would say, uh, you have too many ands in the sentence. Now, I'm using and to refer to the word as a thing. There are multiple words in your sentence that I want you to get rid of. So I would write and apostrophe s. Okay, hopefully that's clear. You ready to test your skills? Of course you are. You're so excited. So turn to your more plural nouns worksheet form A. If you've lost this paper, remember you can find it on the School Fusion website in the grammar nouns folder. We're only doing the front, so pause the video, and when you're ready to check your progress, uh, hit play. Pause now. That was fast. Let's see how you did. On form A, section A, using nouns with irregular plurals. Portuguese, do not add an S. This is an irregular plural noun because it does not change from singular to plural. Remember, the general rule for this is that if it ends in an N, you just add an S like usual. American becomes American. Portuguese, you do not say Portuguese. No, you do not. Do not. Do not say that. You will sound foolish. No change for this one. Woman becomes women. Larva, this is coming to us from the classical languages, Latin and Greek. I believe this one comes from Latin. So the A turns to AE to show that it is plural. If you're paying attention to this video, I believe I gave you this as an example. Salmon, salmon doesn't change. Notice it's an animal. Many animal plural forms, plural nouns are irregular. They either don't change or they change in a weird way like oxen. Per your rule, you should change this to oxes, but that's not how it's done. Tricky, tricky, it's oxen. Six is correct. There's no problem there. Seven, datum becomes data, again, because it's coming to you from classical languages. And number eight, the same thing, crisis, the S-I-S becomes S-E-S. -E did you rock out on section A? Let's see if you did just as well on section B. Writing the plurals of names and compound nouns. And number one, this follows the principle, what's being modified. We're not talking about multiple laws, we're talking about multiple people. In-law describes which type of sister, so sisters becomes plural. My two sisters-in-law are planning a surprise party for my parents. Number two, this is taking uh, the name of a family and making it plural to refer to all the people in that family. So the Jacksons are visiting relatives in New Orleans. Double check your paper. Did you put an apostrophe? If you did, mark it wrong. Remember, no apostrophes except in very, very limited circumstances, such as a number, a symbol, a letter, a word being used as a word. That's it. Three follows the basic principle of rule number eight, cupfuls, tablespoons. We're not talking about multiple tables. We're talking about the actual tablespoon. So the S goes at the end for both of these for the same reason. Same logic at work. And then for number four, this is very similar to the pattern that you saw 
up here in number one with sisters-in-law. Again, we're talking about multiple people, not multiple staffs. Staff is telling you what type of chief it is. So because staff is modifying chief, chiefs is what we make plural. After going over these examples, you should hopefully learn from any minor mistakes that you make. And now you should be ready to demonstrate your learning. So flip the paper over. Time to do the back, form B. And you're going to submit this to me when you're done so that I can assess it and see how great you're doing. Uh, if you need these notes or if you need a copy of this worksheet, don't forget you can go to our Fusion webpage to download either of those. All right, Nuggets, I will see you in class. Feel free to email me if you have any questions. Bye-bye.